Well, let me begin by joining everyone else and thanking John for setting up this event. Obviously, from our point of view as social scientists, this is a very welcome opportunity to understand how we can do research, present findings that are useful to the legal system. So I'm looking forward to the feedback that we get. Obviously, each of us is looking at a slightly different psychological issue. In my case, the thing that I have been concerned about in my research for several decades is the common problem that authorities in all kinds of organizations have, and that is how to bring the behavior of the people within those organizations into line with policies, into line with rules in the organization. In addressing this question, I make two basic arguments. The first argument is that legitimacy matters. That is, the degree to which people believe that rules themselves are legitimate and ought to be obeyed, that authorities are entitled to make decisions that ought to be accepted, they're more likely to go along with those rules and decisions. Also, as John Darley mentioned in his earlier presentation, people are more likely to go along with rules and decisions if those rules and decisions are consistent with their own sense of what's morally right and wrong. The second important point is that this effect of people's values is distinct, and I would argue stronger, than the impact of sanctions. The second argument, and again John mentioned this in talking about procedural justice, is that we know a lot about what makes authority legitimate, and the roots of legitimacy lie in the manner in which authorities exercise their authority, the fairness of the way they make decisions, the fairness of the way they treat people, the manner in which people exercise their authority. To me, the question is, what do you need a psychologist for? A bunch of smart lawyers, what, what can we do to help? I think the thing that we can uniquely bring into this discussion is an effort to test arguments that are empirical, the way that I do that is I interview people, I look at what they do, their behavior, and I try to use that information to show that a model based upon legitimacy, based upon procedural justice, can work. So first, let me say a little bit about everyday obedience with the law. Although all kinds of organizations have similar authority dynamics from the point of view of a psychologist. I think that the area that's most interesting to the legal community is the everyday behavior of people when they're dealing with the courts, the police, because that's central to the ability of the legal system to effectively exercise social control. The traditional model in America is a model that we gain people's behavioral compliance through threatening or actually punishing people. I think it's fair to say that this is the dominant, if not in many ways the only predominant model that's being reflected in a lot of the writing in the legal system. Psychologists have talked about issues about this model. I think the general argument, not to go into too much detail, is represented in Rob McCoon's review of drug laws which is to say that sanction-based approaches are very expensive and sometimes they work, but they never seem to work particularly well. When I talk to legal authorities, say uh, police commissioners or judges, I don't think that they're surprised to hear what I just said, but what they usually say is, you know, this is a costly and not very effective system, but it's the only system that we've got. So that's what we have to do. So what I would like to argue is that we might think about a different approach to trying to motivate rule-following behavior and try to demonstrate to you that this approach will work. I'll first talk about research that I did in Chicago. This is interviews with a random sample of the people living in Chicago. It focuses on their compliance with the law. Typical measures that we use for legitimacy, for moral values. So we might ask people, do you think you ought to defer to decisions? 
if a judge tells you to do something, you ought to do it? Do you think that you ought to follow the law because the law reflects your values? And we compare that to an approach that's based upon risk estimates. If I break the law, I'm likely to be caught and punished. Obviously, the behavior we're concerned about is rule following in people's everyday lives. Now, I'm summarizing a lot of data here in a hopefully clear way by showing you regression equations in which the weight of each of these factors on obedience is contrasted so that the relative height of these columns reflects the relative strength of the motivation. As is typical of these studies, we find that deterrence has a very small effect on compliance with the law. Legitimacy has a stronger effect. Again, as John said, morality even stronger, although I'm going to focus on legitimacy because legitimacy is typically something that the legal system can control. If you don't have moral values on your side, there's not much you can do about that, but you can control legitimacy. So I'd say that this finding is very typical of findings in this area. Values are a key way to control behavior. The second part of the argument, what can we do to activate or encourage people to be motivated by their values? The argument is that fair legal procedures, procedures that people experience as being just, will motivate them to view authorities as legitimate, to see their solutions as acceptable, and to generally follow the rules. I'll give one example. This is from a different study, a study of people living in Los Angeles and Oakland. It's a racially diverse sample by design. All of the people in this study had had recent experiences with the police or with the courts. We always tend to think of experiences as involving, for example, the police stop you. Actually, this study is typical of studies of the police and the courts because it shows that the main way people have contact with both of those types of legal authority is that they go to the authority for help, not that they're stopped by the authority. From our point of view, the good news is no matter how you get there, whether you go to the authority or whether they stop you, about 30% of the time, people don't get what they want. They get a negative outcome. The police don't solve their problem. The police give them a ticket. And so the question is, why will people accept such decisions? Why will they go along with these regulatory actions by legal authority? You can think of the kinds of questions that we would ask about an experience. When the police stopped me, the decisions they made favored me. I got the outcome I deserved, the law said I should get. And then the procedural justice idea is that the authority, whether it's a police officer or a judge, made their decisions fairly, treated the person in fair ways. And then the question, how do they end up feeling? Were they willing to go along with the decision? Do they have good feelings about the authority? So by now, this form of analysis will look more familiar to you. Why would people go along with the decision? So if the police stop you and give you a ticket, you say, OK, I'll pay that ticket. I'm not going to contest it. I'm not going to evade it. I'll pay it. Partly, the favorability of an outcome determines reaction. Partly, whether you think you deserve it. But the main factor that shapes people's reactions is the fairness of the manner in which the authority acted. So the second argument, based upon data from a variety of studies, is that we can get better cooperation if we focus on exercising authority in ways that people experience as being fair. That people will, both in the short term and in the long term, be more likely to accept, to continue to abide by decisions if they're arrived at through fair procedures. <clears throat> 